Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry, I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you for the 29th episode of Optometry Series. I'm very happy to welcome our today's moderator, Ms. Rashima Ma'am. Thank you so much, Rashima Ma'am, for joining with us today. Yes. So we all know Rashima Ma'am is an expert in the occupational optometry. So the topic for today is the role of occupational optometrist in workplace eye wellness. So I'm very happy to welcome my teammates, Ms. Anshika Ma'am and Ms. Meenakshi. Thank you both for joining with me today. So Anshika Ma'am, we know Rashima Ma'am is an expert in the field, but why the topic for today is occupational optometry? So what is special about it? So in the month of March, uh, we know it's the month of work wellness uh, related to the eye and uh, when it comes to uh, eye related uh, work wellness it has to be with us if it's joined together it's occupational optometry how we can really uh, take care of people at their workplaces and what we should be telling them so uh, that's the combination of being march the work wellness month and definitely rashima being an expert is uh, expert in that she's uh, definitely going to be a good guidance for us today so I would request Gaurav to please introduce uh, Rashima ma'am. Good evening everyone. I welcome you all to, our, to join our optometry series. I am Gaurav, second year student of Dr. Agrawal's Institute of Optometry. Our today's topic of our discussion is workplace eye wellness, role of occupational optometrists. I am very happy to welcome our moderator Dr. Rashima Asokan. Dr. Rashima Ashokan currently leads the Occupational Optometry Services and also the Vision Enhancement Clinic of Shankar Netalia, a pioneer tertiary eye hospital in India. She, along with her team, provides eye care to employees at industries and workers among the unorganized sector through the CSR support by various NGOs. She is engaged in estimating the vision standards for various occupations. She is also an active researcher and has presented her research works at various national and international conferences and received awards. To name a few, Young Scientist Award from the Indian Association of Occupational Health 2018, Golden Jubilee Award from the Indian Association of Occupational Health 2018, and the Best Case Report from Optometry Council of India 2020, Dr. C.K. Ramachandar Centenary Award for Best Scientific Presentation from Indian Association of Occupational Health 2024. She is also a proud recipient of Endeavour Executive Fellowship Australia, a competitive grant from the Glucoma Foundation, the US. Her area of research includes environmental effects on the eye, glucoma, occupational ocular diseases, innovative education models in optometry, visual impairment and coping strategies at work. I welcome you, ma'am, to join our optometry series amidst your busy schedule. Today's presenter is Mr. Mr. Billy Graham from third year. I request Mr. Billy to start his presentation. So, good afternoon, everyone. So, I am Billy Graham, studying third year in Dr. Agarwal Institute of Optometry. Today's topic is workplace ocular wellness. So, introduction. What is hazard? It is a process, phenomenon, or human activity that may cause loss of life, injury, or other health impacts, property damage, social and economical disruption, or environmental degradation. It, is, it leads to potential danger or adverse health effects on something or someone. These are the examples. You can see there's somebody getting uh, injury and property damage, social and economical disruption. And what is safety? Safety is the freedom from damage to health, as injury and disease, and property. As damage is the result of risk, safety is the freedom from risk. Total safety is achievable only when the source of risk is completely eliminated and varies depending on the physical circumstances and human acts. Workplace wellness. A workplace wellness is one in which workers and managers collaborate to use a continual improvement on process to protect and promote the health, safety, and well-being of all the workers and the sustainability of the work workplace by considering the following based on their identified needs. So these are the following things which they consider health and safety concerns in the physical work environment, health, safety, and well-being concerns in the socio 
psychosocial work environment, including the organization of the work and workplace culture. Personal health resources in the workplace and ways to participating in the community to improve the health of workers, their families, and other members of the community. So, ocular hazards. There are two types of ocular hazards which generally happens. It's one is mechanical and non-mechanical. Mechan uh, non-mechanical is the chemical, electrical, and the radiational thing. And mechanical, when we see mechanical broadly, it's classified into two major things. It's closed globe injury and open globe injury. So, closed globe is furthermore classified into contusions, lamellar lacerations, and superficial foreign bodies. And open globe is further classified into lacerations and rupture. Lacerations are further classified into penetrating trauma, intraocular foreign body, and perforating trauma. So these are the images of the closed globe injuries. So you can see contusion, which is caused due to the blunt trauma, and laceration, or lamellar laceration, which is being superficial, and then the superficial foreign body. These are the open globe injuries, the rupture and the laceration. You can see the penetration. So when the nail is being just penetrated into the eye, it's the penetrating thing. And intraocular foreign body, which is caused due to some surgical methods. Sometimes the needles get broken and just falls into the eye. And the perforating, the one which makes the entry and, and the exit is the perforation trauma. So workplace hazards. These are the workplace hazards, generally physical, physical ways. Heat, radiation, cold, noise, and vibration, these are the things which causes the hazards in the physical way and chemical way. The hydrocarbons, ketones, fumes, alkalines, amines, and acids cause the hazards. And then moving on to the uh, industrial workers, such as like uh, people who work in the cotton industries and people who work in the sugar, sugar can industries and silica industries. So these people also face the dust, which is being an hazard to them. And uh, the biological way, it's the bacteria, virus, fungi, and pyrocytes cause the hazards and ergonomical factors and fire explosives, fires and explosives. So ex ergonomic factors, the position or the way we are sitting or the way we are working also causes the hazard in the workplace. And finally, the stress and physiological factors. That is the stress, monotony. People usually get bored of doing the same work, going to the, getting up in the morning, going to the work, having some coffee, coming back, sleeping, getting up, going to the work, having coffee, coming and sleeping. The same work, which makes them get bored. What is this like? Like that, it makes them get bored. And then the fatigue, the verbal abuse uh, in the place where we work from the higher authorities or the shift of the time, you know, um, the late shift or the night shift or the irregular shift can cause some uh, hazards and the interpersonal relationship with the colleagues can cause some hazards. So the adaptation of the work to man and each man to the job. So when we see a job and a man, we have to know whether the man is being able to uh, adapt to its capability. Okay, We have to know whether the physical capacity and the mental ability of the man is matched with the physical and mental demands of the job. Okay, This is the adaptation of the work to the man and each man to its job. So moving on to personal protective equipments. What are personal protective equipments? Equipments that are worn to minimize exposure to hazards that cause serious workplace injuries and illness are the pro PPE, also known as PPE. So by definition, we can say devices used to protect employee from injury or illness resulting from contact with chemical, radio radiological, physical, electrical, mechanical, or any other workplace hazards. So moving on to OSHA. OSHA is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. They, they make the... Um, mission to ensure that the employees work in a safe and healthy environment by setting and forcing the standards and by providing training, outreach, education, and assistance. So the employers must comply with all the applicable OSHA standards. So they conduct the documented assessment of the workplace assets and provide appropriate PPE when required. So the um, PPE which is given, they have to give it with the proper training. So when should we use the PPE and what PPE should be used and proper uh, use of PPE and with its limitations and care and maintenance. So the qualities of an ideal eye protector, what all should we see when we are uh, trying to get an eye protector for us doing uh, a job or a work or an occupation which needs to be safe. So providing provide protection against hazard, Comfortable to wear, we have to see whether it's comfortable and we have to make sure it's easy to clean and not costly to replace because if it's costly, we can't just afford to get it often. 
and cosmetically acceptable, should not condense and does, it should not irritate the tissue or the skin. It should be light in weight and not hamper movements, does not impair vision, it should not cause any damage to the vision and it should possess the optical quality, durability and non-flammability and possess compatibility with the other PPE. So, selection of a PPE. Selecting of PPE, selection of PPE depends on the type and severity of the hazard. So, when we are trying to get a PPE for ourselves, we have to make sure that whether uh, it is having all the standards which is able to ha handle the severity of the hazard. The classification is based on the size and of the hazard and the impact on its ocular surface. Hazard smaller than 2 mm in diameter and causing supervision damage to the eye is a low impact hazard. Example like hammering, when you hammer or handling the wires, rocks, bricks or cements, manual shipping or riveting. So these all things uh, cause only a thing which is almost superficial or on the supervision damage. And moving on to the medium impact hazards that are grinding, wood working and machine disc cutting. These all cause medium impact hazards. So what are the proper use of PPE? Any safety program is considered effective if the given PPE is used and maintained well. The effective PPE depends on, so what are the mm, dependence of PPE we are, we are going to see? The user understanding the need. We have to know whether the user is able to understand why we are giving the PPE and it should be comfortable for the uh, user and it should be easy for them to use and it shouldn't affect the work which they are doing, non-interference to work. So if it's affecting the work, we can't just give them and the social, economic, and disciplinary sanction available to influence the at attitude of the user. So the PPE, what are the PPE generally, which is being standardized are the eye and face protection, um, earring protection, hand and skin protection, body protection, head, foot, and respiratory protection. So you can see these are the things which they generally give for PPE. And eye and face protection, moving on to eye and face protection, they protect us from the airborne particles, the liquid chemicals, molten metals, light radiation, and dust. So, what are the PPE given for eyes and face protection? Safety glasses with side shields, goggles, face shields, and welding movements. So, safety safety glasses. Much stronger or more resistance to impact and heat than regular glasses. These are, these are more resistant and has more impact over the heat than the regular glasses which we get. So, this, these are equipped with side shields that gives you protection and hazards that may not be directly in front of you. So when we have a covering over the sides and we may not be aware of the hazards which are which we are getting from the side base. Okay. So these have the side shields so that we can uh, be protected from the hazards which are not directly in front of us. Should be comfortable through the throughout the all the jobs. Okay. It should be comfortable even though in all the jobs which we are doing and it should be a proper fit. So when we are going for goggles, uh, it surrounds the eye area, more protection in situations. Uh, it helps in avoiding the splashing of fluids, fumes, vapors, powders, dust and mist. mist. So must indicate that they are chemical splashes, uh, goggles to be worn for the purpose. Uncomfortable to wear with other headgear like helmet, uh, earmuffs and respirator. So they are saying that uh, we can't wear them when we are uh, wearing the helmet and earmuffs or respirator. Generally, these are these are you can you can see this picture. You can know that many people wear it during the chemical. They work in the chemical uh, thing. They wear this thing, and the face shields. Uh, it protects the full face. Used around operations which expose you to molten metal, chemical splashes, or flying particles. What are the limitations of these face shields? They are not considered eye protection. They will you will have to need you will have to wear a goggles or underneath the face shields. And can fog up if uh, if we are if you are working in an unventilated area. If the area is not properly ventilated, it may fog up and disturb the uh, work which we are doing. And the welding helmets they provide both face and eye protection. Use special absorptive lenses that filter the intense light and radiation energy that is provide uh, that is produced during the welding operation. We can see many people who are doing welding and it has so much uh, radiant energy. So to avoid the intense light and the energy, we, have, we are using the welding helmets. So what are the limitations of this is, uh, it's heavy and hot and can fog up as like the face shields. And we have to wear a safety glass underneath this too. So the ear protection. Ear protections are uh, generally two. So ear plugs, which is less expensive, disposable, good ones to have a fairly high noise radiation rate. Sometimes it's difficult to tell if any employees are wearing them. No, if we can see people wearing them and we'll be just yelling at them 
for not doing the work properly and they might not not got what we are saying and earmuffs these are more expensive more durable typically higher nrr like the noise radiation rate than the plugs more obvious so we can see people who, if we are if they are wearing and we can tell please remove it and have to talk to you we can just say that and in extensive like in so extensive noise areas we can better use both of them we can put the air plugs as well as the earmuffs so we can be uh, safe from the attack so the head protection so the head protection gives us uh, protection from the impact the electrical shock or the drips so generally we see this uh, hats being given to the construction workers so uh, these are the hard hats they protect us from uh, these three things so the hand protection generally has the gloves and they protect us from the trauma and the contact injuries contact injuries uh, means the injuries which we get from the chemicals on contact with them we get the trauma so to avoid them we get we just use gloves and food protection these are the types of hazards like uh, Im impact injuries injuries from spills and splashes compression injuries electrical shocks extreme in cold heat and moisture and sleeping these are the hazards and from to protect them we have safety shoes and boots so body protection types of body protections are see we can use the insulated coats and pants uh, they are generally fire resistant heat resistant cold resistant and the sleeves and aprons we can see as we are all uh, medical students we know we are wearing sleeves and uh, aprons to avoid the uh, reduce of chemical splash over us and to make sure the sleeves and aprons are appropriate for the chemicals so these are the sign conventions so sign category of uh, just letting people know and the awareness about the um, what are the information which we are trying to give them so on category we can see it's the regulatory warning and information the regulatory is a uh, circle and the subcategory are prohibition and mandatory on prohibition the color would be red and black on white and mandatory it would be black white on black and the triangle one is the warning thing it causes caution or the danger the caution one is will be the black on white uh, black on yellow and the danger will be white on red the information thing which is the square is the emergency thing so we can in, it will indicate the first aid and health or fire protection from us and it's generally white on green and general information of the uh, first aid will be the white on blue so moving on to color coding the color the color coding labels and tape identify the type of hazard which helps us to um, uh, identify the level of level of severity it is meant to reduce the possibility of injuries the following chart represents the color codes of both ansi and osha so the red color which is uh, meaning which means the danger helps us in up, helps in applications of safety cans and signs we can see many places having the caution signs in the red color and the stop button in the uh, missionaries are generally a red color and moving on to fluorescent orange or orange red biosafety which means and it it has an applications of labels and container containers for blood and infectious waste so these uh, blood containers or the infectious waste which generally has the orange color orange reddish color and moving on to yellow which gives us the caution from a tripping falling or striking hazards and the orange thing which uh, has the warning thing warning thing um, the parts of machineries or uh, energized equipments that may cut or crush or otherwise injure so these things have uh, orange warning signs and moving on to green is the safety meaning uh, it it is used generally in the applications of location for the first aid equipments and location of safety equipments like respirators and safety shower uh, showers etc moving on to the blue it has the information and uh, like signs bulletin boards specific railroads warning against starting using or moving equipments being repaired and moving on to black white yellow or combination of black with white or yellow this gives us the boundaries so you can see there are so many uh, traffic things or the uh, housekeeping markings where we can say like we can see in the roads men at work so they all generally have the black white or yellow combinations stairways or uh, directions or borders we can see them and uh, moving on to magenta or purple on yellow this causes the radiation uh, radiation caution uh, it is used in uh, the applications where the x-rays alpha beta gamma neutron or proton radiations is being used so these are my references 
and thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Billy. Uh, now I request Rashi ma'am to add your valuable input. That was actually a good coverage of information, Billy. And you had uh, more pictorial representation. So to keep people active listening to your talk, that was very nice. Thank you. And, and, uh, and the topic as such is one workplace wellness. So that is very important because people might be thinking, why should optometrists be talking about workplace, right? So we encounter many patients who are coming to our clinic uh, where they come and say that they have these problems and things. And we directly look into the purpose for which the patient has come and you, you deliver the uh, the management accordingly, right? That is what usually uh, the optometrists do. But at the workplace, it is even more than that. So you can actually look at the environment. You can give them suggestions on the environment. You can see whether the person is working in a hazardous place or not only about hazards, uh, today Billy was covering mainly on hazards that are much more beyond hazards, okay? Not that everybody is working in a hazardous place. There are places where it's non-hazardous, but could be a visually demanding place also. Like uh, when you say workplace, you're talking about industrial sector, but there is something called as non-industrial sector also, right? There are people like uh, carpenters who are not working in an industrial sector, but they are exposed to hazards, Right. So their workplace also has to be safe. So you, we can actually educate people. So when patients come to you, ask them, what is their occupation? Don't just write engineer. OK, so engineering is a field. It has multiple fields into it and it has multiple tasks. We should be knowing what the person is doing so that depending upon that, we can actually counsel the patient. Okay. So on workplace wellness, the next part is. When you say wellness, it is about health, right? So whenever we talk about health, it is actually promotion and maintenance of health. So wellness means a healthy work environment. So we need to actually look into protection, prevention, and uh, when you select a candidate itself, you should be knowing whether the person is actually fit for the job or not. So uh, take somebody, put there, and then uh, they are actually not fit for that particular task, then it is not actually an ideal condition for him. And you uh, put a person who is going to be completely, uh, say, for example, uh, you are taking a person who is going to be into the marine engineering where he has more of uh, skin allergy and things. He's not going to be a fit for fit over there, right? So in that case, he's not the right candidate to be placed in marine right so likewise each each field has its own plus and minus and we need to rightly choose the right person for the right job so first is selecting the right person to right job and next is looking at the environment look at what are the hazards today uh, billy was actually listing down different types of ppes which is being seen in the working environment do we actually ask our patients whether they are using these ppes no, right? So if, if you know that a person is actually a welder, do we inquire about what kind of welding shields he's using, what kind of weld, uh, PPEs he's using, whether he's using a goggle? For welding, it is not only about the shields, it also has an important information about the filter what he use, okay? A um, few of you would have actually seen people use a plate kind of, it's a, like a glass plate, which is a filter, okay? It's a dark green filter they use, for welding, okay? So these kind of shades can also be incorporated into the protective eyewears, which means he need not actually hold the plate. He can actually wear the PPE and directly actually do the welding, okay? So um, he was mentioning about covering uh, side shields. Why should be worried about a side shield? So side shield has to be given when a person is working in a place where there's a flying object, which, is, which he can be encountering. So in that case, there is a possibility that the flying object could actually hit through the sides. Okay, uh, most of the pictures what he showed, where there is a laceration and things, it is mainly because of in the work environment there is some flying particles. Mm -hmm. The force or the speed at which the per, uh, the particle hits the eye actually creates the impact. Right. So in that case, we should be knowing if if possible, if we could actually go to the workplace and look at uh, look around and we could actually give a counseling, and also. 
the other thing which uh, i wanted to add about is the about the lighting condition okay so lighting condition should also be uh, explain to the patients about the safe working environment too much of light is also not good because it could create glare so very less light there is a possibility of trips errors they might miss out few informations so it should be an optimum thing so you need to know whether this is a stores area whether this is actually a control panel area whether this is actually an inspection area so depending upon each zones we need to actually look at the lighting levels so whenever we work, um, i mean visiting an industry always carry a lux meter so you know about the light levels in each location and based on that we could actually counsel a person and uh, always have in mind that uh, hazards yes it will be there uh, we can sometimes we cannot eliminate the hazard completely okay zeroing down the hazard is very difficult sometimes we might make some engineering controls or we might look at some alternate options to actually avoid those hazards not that every hazard can be eliminated or completely zeroing down if you feel that it is it is completely essential that it has to be completely removed it should be taken to higher level management and it should be completely removed but it leads a lot of noise right and the other important aspect is about the fire safety which every other organization even in our health sector also people will be actually trained for fire safety and things because it is an unavoidable hazard right most of the places and about electric shock that's the next one which we even face at home right electric shock is very common and uh, the next is about the, the the materials to choose when you are looking at the ppes as uh, billy was listing down uh, how is the flying particle the size of the fly, flying particles and things you need to know about what kind of materials to be given not everything need not be polycarbonate if it is going to be only like a very small uh, wood related work you don't need to go for polycarbonate there are other uh, lens materials which is which is also impact resistant which can also be given okay um like because polycarbonate you know that scratch it's more prone for scratches so you could actually go in for high refractive index lens materials but with good impact resistance better than cr39 you can actually go for those materials um anything else always look for prevention preventive measures than looking at uh, Uh, what you could do later on after the incident happens that should be our motto so always look for the preventive measures and counsel the patients based on that and the other important hazards which is very common as he was mentioning is the stress related psychological hazards where uh, mental well being has to be considered okay so now it's not about the exposure it's not about the ergonomics it is mainly about mental well being now so people should be comfortably working not only by position but also mentally there should be some peace and comfort for a person so uh, we also need to act as psychologist of late need to counsel patients based on it you need to know what the patient is actually undergoing so don't blindly get, judge a person based on oh he's just saying something but he is perfectly fine so there could be something else which is going on in his mind that could be the reason for his stress and uh, the current condition so i'm uh, i hope i have uh, covered most of the aspects is there any other questions uh... i'm sorry yeah ma'am we got few questions from our zoom and uh, youtube participants so i'll read out the questions for you ma'am mm. first question is that uh, what kind of tests can be done to identify what problems they are facing up in their regular workplace okay so test see what problem they are facing at the workplace you cannot be doing with just test we have to actually visit the workplace and then understand it just yeah. right but instead um i can give you some examples uh there was a patient who came to us he said that he always has a neck pain uh and also he says that uh, gets headache often okay so which was very very typical complaint of people who have are uh, working with uh, systems right mm -hmm. so we assume that he is working on a, a system and he we looked at uh, all bv parameters and other things mm -hmm. then when we asked him about the details of his workplace how it is and things and he said he usually sits almost like one and a half feet away from the display unit and the display unit is like a large tv which is wall mounted okay and he sits in the chair aram say like this 
and he looks into the control panel unit where there is lots of numbers and colors and he has to document if there anything goes down or if there is any alert and things and some of the measures he has to document and when i asked him about how is the lighting conditions in the room he said it's it's a very bright very nice room a very bright light and things and now you know what is the reason behind his headache and the neck pain because it is mounted at uh, very high levels, which is why he's always putting his neck like this and he has a neck pain. And the headache is mainly because of the bright lit room and he's focusing on something. So we looked into it and we told him what are the modifications he could do it. And then he was much better when we asked for the compliance assessment. So we didn't do anything act actually looking at the eye aspect. It is questioning, okay, ask more details in depth about what task they do, we will be right on to the diagnosis there. Okay, we don't need to do any extra test there. At the workplace, what we usually do is measure the distance at which the person is working, look at the light levels, look at the eye levels, look at how is the seating position, where is this table seats and how cluttered the place is. Is there any wires, anything which is possibly a hazard for him? That's the only thing which we document at the workplace. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, next question, there are three questions from students' perspective. So for their understanding, it is like, uh, where do we get PPEs? Okay, so there are multiple industries which actually manufactures PPE, okay? So 3M is one which actually gives a good standard uh, protective eyewears. And the other one is NOAA. NOAA gives a very good uh, protective eyewears, okay? So they have, and Bole is there, which gives a range of uh, protective eyewears, okay? So as uh, Billy was mentioning, the protective eyewears also needs different, different components. It's not at a single standard for everybody, okay? If the person is going to be in a heat, I mean, very high heat environment, you have to select a different thing, which is actually going to be more resistance to heat, okay and uh, you should there are possibilities that they will have some pores in the frame itself which could actually ventilate okay these pores are also available there are things which are detachable side shields so that does, uh, the person can actually use as a regular goggles only when he goes to the shop floor he can actually use the detachable side shields the other one is like a completely covered snugged one where it is has to be worn when it is going to be a highly hazardous place Okay, so there is no chance that it actually comes out. Okay, likewise, uh, there are multiple PPEs. Probably if you actually look into OSHA's website itself, you will get uh, multiple images of the PPEs for the eye. Okay, as, as for the eye, you have other for uh, the gloves, the helmets and the shields, which are also available. As uh, Billy was mentioning about the boots, Yes, that is also important. Off late, we see uh, patients from uh, salt pan workers or um, uh, say <clears throat> what these people are doing is they're standing into the salt pan for a longer hours, right? They come with skin diseases. Okay, they're not, they are actually standing with the barefoot. Then we advise them they could actually go in for boots. The boots could be washed and they could use only the, the boots only for the salt pan, right? So their leg is actually safeguarded. The only problem over there is only when we talk to these people, we'll know and we understand their problem. The problem is the boots are heavy. Okay. If you see these salt pan workers, you no, know, they will be like a thin, very lean people. So they feel like it's very heavy for me to lift and walk in the plane that sometimes I'll trip. So we told them that it is more important that they have to safeguard their skin because it is going to cause more corrosion and it is going to ha have a long-term impact. Okay, And the other problem is because of skin penetration of salt into the body, they will have kidney disorders. Okay? Kidney disorders are very common with salt pan workers. So explaining these things outweighing the, the uh, carrying the weight they feel that, it, yes, it is important that they have to use the boots. Okay, so it's only about how you talk to these people. You can actually convince them to use these PPEs. So 3M, Nova, Bole, these are the people who, from whom we can actually take it. Okay, yeah, ma'am. The next question will be, how protective are the PPE? Will they prevent from severe damages? Yes, that's an interesting question. How protective it is? So it depends upon what kind of work environment it is.
So, as I said, different levels of uh, protection can be given. Okay. So, um, as I was telling about the carpentry, so it could be a simple high impact resistant glasses also. If it is going to be something like uh, the picture which uh, Mr. Billy was showing where uh, the nail actually had hit into the eye. Did you notice that? That was actually a very severe one. Okay. It could be it could be anywhere in the factory. But the speed at which the nail came is what is very important to hit into the eye and penetrate like that. So if you feel there is a high possibility of flying particles with a high speed, then the spectacle should be of high impact resistance, not only the spectacles, but and not only the lens, but also the frame. Okay. So they have some standards. ANSI has uh, given a standards for personal protective equipments, mainly for the eyes. Likewise, for uh, Indian standards, we don't have much in, on that. They just have glass safety standards. That's it. But we can actually follow the ANSI standards for uh, safety regulations. Thank you, ma'am. The next question will be, uh, who buys the PPE? Employers or the employees? That's an interesting question. Usually, in any organized sector, it is the duty of the employer to buy the PPEs and give it to their employees to make sure and also to make sure that they have to wear it. Okay. If you look into the organized sector, there are multiple people involved. Okay. The higher level management. Next comes the supervisory levels. And then you also have medical officers. You will also have occupational hygienists there. And you will have floor level supervisors. Okay. So the occupational hygienist always looks around the environment and assesses the risk. Okay. And he gives a comment which shop floors needs what kind of PPEs. And it is a duty of the hygienist to also evaluate whether these people are wearing or not. So whenever there is an audit comes in, they have to show that these people are definitely wearing it and things. We always encourage the employees to wear these PPEs and make sure that they always wear it. Okay. If you go to any of the industries, if you are going into the shop floor, they advise you to wear. Okay. When we go into the industry, definitely we wear a helmet, we wear boots, and we also wear reflectors. Okay. So people will know that somebody is walking there. So they don't, because it's all huge places, no? So somebody is walking alone, there will not be anybody around. It will be full of machines, right? So there is a possibility anything trips off, the person should be safeguarded. If anything goes wrong there, the employer has to pay the compensation, okay? So employer has to give the PPE, employer has to pay the compensation also if anything goes wrong. And sometimes if the employee is not wearing a PPE, it is actually the employer can make a file saying that I have given it, but he is not using it. So the compensation cost actually comes down. So what is received by the employee comes down. Okay. So it is a loss for the employee also. So we need to educate the employee about the importance of PPE. And also it is if you're not using it and if you've lost your finger, if you've lost your hand, if you lost your eye also, the compensation amount is actually going to come down if you are not using it. Okay, so that way you can actually threaten people also. <laughs> so always it is from the employer. It is not by the employee. But the employee can also, um, I mean, order for an uh, PPE. It is employee's right also. If he feels that the uh, PPE is broken or it is not in a good condition, he can go and change the PPEs. That's why it is. it has to be uh, strong, it has to be affordable, it has to be in a replaceable also. It should be available, first of all. Thank you so much, ma'am. I guess we have answered the second question also. They have asked any compensation can be given in case of disability. Yes, it is. It is. Yes. There is something called as Workman Compensation Act. Yes. So through the act, you can you have uh, multiple informations, which has been like one finger is lost, a thumb is lost, a uh, pointy is lost. Likewise, you have... Uh, for everything, okay? If a hand is lost, if a knee is, uh, has to be replaced or if anything which is related to work, okay? There is compensation. And that is the reason why medical fitness is very important. Once the person is entering into the industry, they do a baseline examination because he should be perfectly fit at the entry. 
So if anything happens on a long term, they will evaluate and say it is because of long term working in this particular industry, he has got it, like liver disease or uh, diabetes, anything. So diabetes also is stress related, okay? <sighs> Thank you so much, ma'am. To add on to Q&A, uh, I would like to say Saranya ma'am has joined us and she appreciated Billy for the good presentation. Followed with, she asked whether she whether we can suggest any good lux meter for the use of our patient. Yes, we have multiple lux meters which are available. Probably I will share that uh, details in the chat box. Thank you so much, ma'am. Anshi ma'am, do you have any questions, ma'am? No, I don't have any questions. So, Rashima, that was beautifully and very well explained. Uh, Billy, a very nice presentation. So, I'll just sum up in very few words what uh, Rashima has spoken today. Three things which are very important. Ask, talk and counsel is what I think uh, is the major uh, you know, the talk, the thing that she wants us to carry, take home message today, that the more we ask, the more we talk, we get more on details and we will be able to counsel the patients more about workplace wellness. And when we are concerned about when we're doing a workup or anything, we are definitely not going to miss out on lighting or any other questions which are not just related to the eye. It could be just a sitting posture. It could be just how much they are walking around or how much they are sitting. So general aspects are also what are supposed to be asked in the history taking is what we are generally talking for students. And uh, thank you so much for in, uh, telling us about the PPE and its materials, the lens materials. And prevention is better than cure is also one of the important messages that Rashima has told. So thank you so much, uh, Rashima, for letting us know that asking and counseling is definitely going to help us for maintaining a better uh, workplace wellness. So over to you, Gomati. So thank you so much, uh, Hanshima. Uh, also welcome, Jemima Ma'am. Jemima has also joined us today. Thank you for joining, Jemima Ma'am. Hi, so, thank you. Okay, thank you. You have any questions, Ma'am? Jemima? Actually, I, want, I was wondering, is there any paper on barriers to uptake of this uh, protective uh, PPE? Is there anything like that? Uh, thanks, Jemima. That's a good question. We have actually collected the information on it. Okay. Uh, many people actually feel that sometimes it disturbs them. Mainly helmet, at least they are wearing it. Uh, they know it is uh, important to uh, safeguard their skull. But for mm -hmm. the eye, the usage is actually very, very limited. When they or it comes, when they see the occupational hygienist over there, they wear this uh, <laughs> PPEs. Otherwise, it will be lying somewhere in their pockets or jacket somewhere. So whenever we go to industries, we tell people that it is important that we educate. How many other times we? We educate as an external person that too with the expertise in the optometry field, eye care field. When we tell them, they understand, yes, it is important that uh, we have to um, use certain things. Likewise, um, the actually the acceptance rate is very, very, very less. With, uh, and uh, from my experience, sometimes when I approach some companies, mm. the employers are so skeptical because they are worried that in case we do some tests and then the employees find out that such such uh, such lighting is required, such ergonomics is required, and then they might go against them. And there is some resistance. So what do you feel about that? Like Yes, I, I will actually tell you about one history uh, or a stro story here. When we went to okay. one of the... Uh, leather manuf uh, manufacturing actually unit uh, we when we were looking at it we looked at different colors lights being used over there okay mainly the yellow lights and things and uh, few had uh, fluorescent lights and then they said uh, our major problem here is few of them the pieces get rejected because the shades are not matching mm -hmm. so we told them that uh, the only problem here is it is not about the man it is about the light which is your which you are using one is fluorescent another is yellow so when you see under the yellow color there is always a change in color perception right so there is a that's the reason why the person is not able to give the correct matching color over there and just change the yellow light that solves their problem okay so so when we actually talk to them see not everybody accepts what we say mm. okay but when we say or connect it with the productivity and when we say that this can actually cause dryness this can actually cause strain a uh, glare and things they might instead of saying completely remove it you could actually give the alternate solution also what could be done instead of placing the lights directly opposite place it tilted or place a, a diffuser on top so that it is not going to hit onto the person's eye. So these few suggestions, they were able to accept it. 
not a major change in things definitely they will not but few stations if we actually tell them and even the employees accept that change then it is easier to uh, convince the management right right Thank you so much, Rashima ma'am. Thank you, Jemima ma'am. So it was wonderful having you here, Rashima ma'am. So we like to host you on another wonderful platform. Thanks to Anshi ma'am for bringing you inside. Thank you so much, both of Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, best wishes, Billy. Uh, that was a very good presentation. Thank, Thank you, Rashima. Thank you so much for giving your time and accepting for uh, being a part of the Optimetry series. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, team. Thank you so much. Yeah. Dear audiences, that was a great session from Rashima Ma'am and Billy Gragam. So if you have any questions on the session, please post your questions in the comment box. We'll get back to you with the answers. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and share with your friends. We'll meet you in the next wonderful episode. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.